Welcome everyone into the latest edition of the USFL podcast interview series, bringing you the latest interviews and discussions from players, coaches, and personalities from around the United States football league. Today we're bringing in I, last week. We had a record setting kicker, uh, Louis Aguilar, a special team. It's been kind of the, the, I think the jive lately on this show. And it just ha so happens. We're going to bring in another record holder for the USFL. Uh, one that I would say brought a lot of social media buzz and attention just from the return itself. Uh, and also a pretty good receiver while he's at it too. He's not just a kick returner or punt returner. It's Derek <laughs> Dillon, Memphis showboats receiver and return man himself. The specialist as we saw last week, Derek, how are you doing? Um, like I said, and you obviously know, got a lot of press attention on you these days. How, how, right. How's it been uh, post win this week? Uh, it's been crazy, man. Social media been blowing up, phone blowing up, text messages, calls from everybody, man. It just, it's just been crazy. Well, it's not every day that we see a 109 yard, uh, punt or really missed field goal return. That's what's more, more unique about it, is that, you know, it's a, it's one you have to make sure you get in and you're right on the thin line of that bad boy. First off, mm -hmm. I got to ask, have you seen the replay of the broadcast of your return? Cause I mean, not only do you have it where you're on, you're really on the razor edge of getting that mm -hmm. to actually become a TD, but Jack Collinsworth's commentary and call on that is uh, one of the best I have heard all season from any of our broadcasters on these games. And I mean, that's saying something uh, because his call, I was, it got me hyped up watching that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I have, I saw his, you know, I, I just, I just been seeing the clip that this, this has been posted and I watched it a couple of times. Then I watched it at the, the, um, the non TV copy, but I don't think I heard his yet. Oh, you have to, you have, have, to check. have to look it up and find it. Yeah. You have to check it out. He, Cause he, as I say, just go to, you'll just have to check it out on the social, but I mean, he's been, he had a great call on it. Got me pumped up for it. I mean, obviously you're, you're jazzed on the sidelines for it all. I mean, was there ever, was there ever a moment during the run you're like, okay, I know I'm breaking this. Cause I mean, you get up, you, you kind of get about the 30, 40 yard line. You do have to kind of spin out of a tackle, but you still, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of traffic. I mean, it's not a normal punt return. You know, you're still, it's more yeah, like exactly. a kick return set up and you're kind of, it's madness at that point. But was there ever yeah, a moment exactly. you're like, I know I'm gone. Oh yeah, when I spent out of it and I and I started cutting across field and I seen the angles that the lineman was taking, I just knew they had they didn't have a chance because I knew once I got to the next lineman, I was going to cut it up. And when I cut it up the field, I seen when my teammate uh, Derek Abrams, I already had the kicker walled off and he just waving to me, "Come on, come on, come on!" And when I saw that, I just knew I was going to score. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big one too. Basically, you know, no one can predict the halves, but I mean that. Talk about the flow of the game. Defense on your on the opposite side shut things down, and that really locked things up for yourself. Um, you know, but I will say on your side of the ball, uh, I would say last three weeks has been pretty nice. Massive turnaround for Memphis. Uh, you know, definitely night and day compared to the beginning of the year. I think a lot of people, not to bring back the sting, but I think a lot of people have forgotten that loss in Birmingham as well. Um, because it's <laughs> definitely game in the South now. Um, yeah, how, exactly. how do you attribute? What do you attribute for yourself the turnaround right now? Like, what are you seeing team wise? That's just you know, it seems like week four after that close loss to Memphis, everything just flipped the switch. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just now and lately, uh, this coach has been on us about the details because when we go back and watch the film, it just is small little detail that's keeping us from keeping drives going or scoring touchdowns or you know just keeping uh, the offense or keeping the uh, offense for keeping the ball like you know in defense aspect. So, you know, we just been dialed in on the details and just keeping everything clean and, and it's just how we turn everything around. Like no right. penalties, no turnovers and everything. That's very vi that's very vital, you know, and I meant and for clarification, that was against Houston from week three. Nonetheless, though, uh I mean, certainly it has been the details. You guys have cleaned up, it seems you guys have cleaned up a lot. Uh one of one of the more want less turnovers, which has been in the stats, mm -hmm. penalties have been down. You know, that's obviously going to make exactly. Coach Haley happy <laughs> much more so than in the beginning of the seasons. I think something else that, you know, we attribute, and this is no slight at any quarterback on your roster, but Cole Kelly has seemed to come in for you guys. And, you know, you're, you're getting, you're looking for signal callers to have thrown towards you. Um, he seems to have taken a really big lead in terms of locking down your huddle. Um, what kind of presence is Cole bringing to your huddle now? It looks like he really has taken kind of this command of sorts of your offensive side of the ball. 
Yeah, exactly what you say. He just come in, just taking in command, making sure everybody knows what's going on, and then he just make the right decisions. Mm-hmm. So that's all we can ask for. <laughs> That's all. Hey, but it's working. That's all. That's all you got. Exactly. Mention, yeah. As long as it's working, that's, that's all we ask. As long as it's working. <laughs> I, I I talk about I talk about the fact you know you're you're one of the returning players for this roster, which is kind of weird given that people it's Memphis is new, but you are you know the roster still is the same from last season. You know when you were under the Tampa Bay Bandits banner, of course for the mm-hmm. league itself, you get to now play in a home city or home hub in Memphis, your own crowd, your own people that are behind you. First win, by the way, at home last week. So that's also mm-hmm. sweet. Uh, you know, I've been there for a hub game in for a Houston game, but for yourself, what, how's the atmosphere for the Memphis crowd? I mean, it looks like I love the, I love seeing the people with kind of the boat captain look or like the yeah. yacht club, you know, they really seem to be buying in to you guys coming to town and kind of bringing that energy back for the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's amazing compared to last year. You know, we, everybody was in Birmingham, and only time we have fans at the game is when we play in Birmingham, and they're not cheering for us. So, you know, we come to Memphis, and, and they, they loved us from day one, you know. So it's, it's amazing going out to play for them and seeing all the people with the hats, the signs, the, you know, the face paint, the jerseys. It's it just, it just amazing to show how much support they have. And, and I'm glad they are coming to the game, and I hope they just keep coming for the rest of the season because it, it gives a it gives us energy because like we we feed off of them and, and we feed off each other also. So yeah, right. I, I'm excited about it. Right. I mean, we're gonna. I mean, shoot. I'll definitely be ending the ending this interview talking about your massive uh, call to revenge game if you want against the Gamblers coming up this week and one that's not <laughs> for revenge. But I mean, again, it's so strange, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this that. You know the season feels so compact with all the teams. I mean, if you you've maybe noticed as I have, everyone in this league is within a, a game or half a game now. Like it, completely different vibe than even what maybe some were, were from last year, where you felt like it was kind of top heavy for each division. Mm-hmm. And you're, obviously, you guys were still fighting until well into the season last year with Tampa Bay. But I mean, have you noticed the competitive level just kind of higher up this year amongst all yeah, the teams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely realized because, like, all of us is just, like, a couple wins or, you know, just a couple touchdowns away from, you know, winning or beating, winning or losing against each other. So the competition level is definitely risen, and, and guys are competing hard, you know. So it, it makes it more – this league more exciting that to see how close the talent level is and, and each and every game is, like, one touchdown away or two touchdowns away. So, you know, and just a salute to the to – the, to the, um, to the league and the competition level. <laughs> I love it. Me. Right. Well, it Hey, and it keep you guys, and it keeps you guys right in the postseason March as well. Even, you know, three, four and two teams above you, one, three and three being yourself, but that just doesn't mean any records don't really mean anything at this po- point. It's all about exactly. wins. I want to touch back exactly. on the community, Derek. I mean, you guys, you yourself and others, you know, it seems, you know, a lot of, a lot of been going out into the Memphis community and kind of trying to just, I would say give back in a way, you know, kind of really, it's really been shown mm-hmm. that, you know, not only the USFL, but for, as the showboats, you know, you're there, yeah. you're part of the, part of the community engagement kind of, can you give us for those maybe that haven't been following, uh, what, what have you and your teammates been doing uh, in, in particular um, that you're proud of being out in the Memphis community or things that you've been doing recently uh, out in Memphis, Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we do all kind of stuff, man. Like beginning of the year, we was going out to schools playing with the little kids, you know, then we'll go and talk to them about the the test that they had coming up, the big test. Um, so we're going to talk to them, encourage them, just, just you know, just showing our face in the community because, you know, a lot of them support us. So we just want to give back to the community. And you, we also go talk to, the to like, the juvenile detention center, talk to the kids, you know, just try to keep them in a straight mind, keep them on a straight and arrow, like keep them steady, you know, stay out of trouble. You know, and stuff like that. Like uh, yesterday, we did like a food, went to the food bank drive and just packed okay. bags so they can help send out send out boxes and stuff to you know people that's in need. So you know, we're just doing our best to help the community because, like I said, they come out and support us every home game, and we just want to give back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, new home home team as well, and you know, love to see what you guys are doing. Like I said, I love those posts online that you're that the social team for you know, your team in particular for the showboats or for the Memphis hub put out between you guys and the gamblers. Cause I mean, it's great to see Lee giving back to folks 
in its own community like that, you know, mm -hmm. and it's glad to see, you know, yourself out there too, helping, helping things. I will mention, I've had Juwan Washington on this show. That was the most recent video. <laughs> that dude is a goofball. And I, exactly. I, I, I love it, man. I, mean, I was so yeah, glad to see guy, him back man. when he came back. He is, he is. Uh, exactly. He was a, all smiles when, he, when we walked in the door. We all saw him. Like he was just all smiles, like a little kid in a candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just got reminded of that because like I said, you guys are packing up. And this is from a social post I'm referencing from earlier while we're talking today. And like I said, he's just like I said, all smiles, all all goof, all his goofy self. Yeah, yeah, in a good yeah, way. Because he was in my, he was he was part of my group, and yes, he just had us dying laughing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'll be, I'll be, you guys seem to be also having a little, having more more fun more fun as of late. Um, one instance, I'm only going to ask this because I think a lot of people were curious about it. Um, so how, <laughs> bear with me while I ask this question. Why is, <laughs> why is it after you guys beat uh, New Orleans, I'm seeing Todd Haley, uh, quote unquote, <laughs> throwing it back in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> how does, how does I it have get... no explanation. Wait a minute. That's I, 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 I do not know. I guess he just caught up. He got caught in the heat of the moment, and and that just was what what happened. I really do not have explanation of that because we ask him every day at practice. Like, man, that's the only, that's all the dance moves you have. Like, you can't think of anything else. <laughs> yeah, we always mess with him about that. Oh my god. <laughs> Forgive me. I had I had to know. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem, man. No problem. Everybody had to know. Asks, asks us that question. <laughs> anyway, so back back to the season here, and we'll we'll kind of wrap some things up going into that into this week again. I, I hinted at this. We were going to talk about this. It's you three and three. You guys are three and three now. Defense has been ferocious to say the least in this win streak. Things have really been turning around. Offense is getting into a rhythm, finding some groove. Uh, for your guys, and you're gonna be taking on the Gamblers here rematch of a what I would consider a season classic, or at least classic of the return of the league since its first two years have come back. Um, and really, what was excellent game itself? You know, Ryan McDaniel's mm -hmm. catching that juggling pass, got have to have go right back down the field. Unfortunately, you guys get a crushing loss at home. Um, what are some keys? What are some keys of the game you see in this one um, that are so that you think will be coming into play. Cause I mean, Memf this is, we're talking, we're talking a possible playoff deciding game right here for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I imagine coach Haley's emphasizing this too, and practices as well, but you know, it's uh, I mean, yeah. you get, you guys get to have another chance and at home once more against arguably the best team in the league at this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we just not doing anything too special, man. We just like we say, we just taking a game at a time, and it's just a, another team on the on the list that we have to beat. So, like I said, we just have to attention to the details. Everybody doing what they have to do, and and everything else will play out. So that's the only thing we're really focusing on right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you'll be you'll be in for a dog fight fight itself. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Hopefully. Uh score a touchdown once more. It's funny. Not only do you hold, oh, yeah. not only do you hold now the kick return record or well, longest touchdown record in the league itself. Uh, but you know, funny little fact you get is you score the first touchdown of the showboats return. We're talking mm -hmm. years in the making return. You get to have that as yeah, your, yeah, yeah. For, for the rest of your season. I got to, this is, I asked this for players as well. I mean, what are, what are some things you're looking to do that maybe you're, not say individually where you're trying to be individualistic of your team, but you know, stuff that you'd love to accomplish if you say had items you wanted to accomplish and move into for next, for the end of this year. Oh yeah. I just only individual goal for me. I really didn't say any, you know, I just, besides just winning and making the playoffs, but you know, I just, I would definitely like to be like one of the top receivers in the, in the league and also a returner. You know, that's my main two like you know goes for the season, rest of the season and just try to make it a playoffs and, and and make it to the the championship and win you know that's just the main goal just winning it and everything right, else like a playoff just play out how it pulls to 
I I think you got a good shot if you get things done this week, this coming weekend. Uh, one other thing you got coming your way. My final question to you: uh, How much are you looking forward to that uh, special teams player of the week bottle of Miller Lite coming your way? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I was telling all the teams get ready because I'm gonna spray everybody that's around. <laughs> they know it's coming, and that, this is the thing. Yeah, they, they even it. if you aren't gonna do it, you see it. Social those social members, they're gonna make you do it no matter what. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I can't wait. I've been waiting on it. <laughs> well, enjoy I enjoy your tall boy. Enjoy your forty ounce. And also <laughs> enjoy preparation for the rest of the week. Derek, it's uh, been a pleasure to talk with you. Um, congrats on your accomplishments and uh, best of luck, of course, this weekend against Houston. Should be should be arguably the game of the week um, in the league, and mm-hmm. we can't wait to see it. Between, between the U2 and New Orleans and Birmingham, the South is going to have some fun games this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to be competitive this week. <laughs>